Hey everybody, Charles for HumbleMechanic.com and I'm back in the home studio in my comfortable office. Um, it's Monday, November 17th and today is episode 14 and today we're going to be talking about a very, very timely topic and that's getting our cars ready for winter. I'm sitting here in my house, it's raining outside, it's 45 degrees, it's 65 in the house because I keep the uh, heat on nice and low. And um, we're going to talk about getting our cars ready for winter. Again, it's November 17th, so we might be a week or two behind, depending on where you live. Um, but we're going to talk about it anyway, because it's definitely not too late to get this taken care of. Now, before we get rolling into the, uh, the full podcast, I want to let you guys know and remind you that prepping your car for winter is highly dependent on where you live. So if you live in Arizona, your winter prep for your car is going to be much different than if you live in Chicago. Um, keep that in mind through the whole episode. If you live in Arizona, you're probably not too worried about uh, getting your car ready for winter, but uh, you know, you're more interested in what do you need to do for the summertime. But we're going to talk about it in a very general way. I live in North Carolina, so we see hot temperatures in the summer, cool to cold temperatures in the wintertime. I know last year we got oh, three or four, five, six inches of snow which I know to you northern folks doesn't sound like all that much, but we don't have the equipment to deal with it. So, it was a disaster. I'm sure you guys seen that picture going around uh, where it looked like the apocalypse on, uh, uh, on Glenwood Avenue. But anyway, let's move on with the podcast. We're going to talk about prepping our car in two different ways. We're going to talk about getting our vehicle ready, the mechanics of it, and then we're going to talk about getting our stuff ready, the things we keep inside of our car. And... Um, you know, the getting our car ready part is really not that different from all the time. We, we should be doing a lot of these things, uh, you know, with our services or just as general upkeep on our car. The stuff side of it where, the you know, that's the things we keep inside of our car, uh, that varies season to season and it should also be something that we think about um, in the wintertime, in the summertime, spring and fall. So, you know, quarterly, I guess, would do a, be, a, be a really good way to... Uh, to focus on that. So let's talk about the car first. Now like I said, this is all stuff that you should really be at least aware of all the time. Um, I don't expect everyone to you know, check their coolant every single day they drive their car, but it's something that we need to be aware of. So what I always tell people when they ask me, you know, Charles, what do I need to do to get my car ready for winter is, if you haven't had it serviced, just go ahead and get it serviced. If it's borderline, get it done now. Um, if you're a DIYer, do it yourself. You know, if, if you're the type of person that brings it into the shop, take it to the shop and get them to look it over for you so that, uh, that you got a good idea of the situation with your car going into the, uh, the more extreme, extreme weather. Because winter's tough on cars. You know, I, I grew up just outside of Chicago and I remember, you know, batteries getting weaker in the winter time and my car being covered in salt and uh, all that stuff uh, all that stuff can definitely wreak havoc on your car so the more we do going into the season uh, hopefully the better our car will behave during the season and the better shape it'll be coming out of the season so first up let's check our lights brake lights tail lights turn signals headlights the whole nine yards Again, something we should be really, really focused on all the time, but in the wintertime, it's getting darker earlier, so we want to make sure that all our lights are functioning properly. Tires. Again, something we always want to be, be aware of and keep in good, good repair, but with colder temperatures, our tire pressures drop, so we need to make sure we're checking our tire pressures. If you have a vehicle that's newer than 08, you have tire pressure monitor. If you have an older vehicle like I do, um, you don't have that feature. So make sure you're keeping an eye on your tire pressures. And just because the light's not on doesn't mean you don't need to check it. There's some really big ones, though, um, that, that can actually cause severe damage to your engine. And that's uh, coolant. So we want to make sure our coolant is good. You can buy one of those cheap hydrometers from... Uh, you know, Walmart or whatever, the, the thing with the bubble and you suck up some coolant in it and it's got the little floaty dealies. Um, we don't need to be scientific with it. We just need to make sure our coolant's going to do what it's going to do for us. And, uh, you know, this is very, very cold weather specific, but, you know, coolant doesn't just prevent the engine from freezing. Um, it also does cool and lubricate engine parts, uh, water pumps and whatnot. Um, also do a visual check on the coolant. 
Volkswagen coolant, for example, is a pinkish purple color, and uh, if, if you look in the reservoir and it's clear or green, um, you could have a problem. If it's green, you have the wrong coolant in it. If it's, uh, you know, 07 or so, or uh, excuse me, 1997 or, or newer, um, if you're not sure what color your coolant is supposed to be, hop on the internet and ask. Uh, Google knows what color um, I think most coolant is supposed to be, so uh, that's a good resource. Um, just, just ask the internet, it'll tell you. So do a visual, get it checked with a hydrometer, you'll know how much, uh, you know, what temperature it'll freeze at, and uh, that's, that's important. You know, here it can definitely get into the teens, um, even in the single digits overnight. If you're up in the north, um, teens, high is normal. You know, I remember being zero or four degrees as the high uh, living in, you know, just outside of Chicago. So coolant's really, really, really important. All right, now that we know our coolant's good, let's move on to another really vital fluid as far as driving goes. It doesn't really impact us starting our car or running our car, but it does impact the drivability of our car, and that's windshield washer fluid. That's usually the first fluid that will freeze in your vehicle. I remember last winter we had uh, Jetta after Jetta after Jetta come in with blown fuses for the washer fluid pump because the washer fluid was freezing so the, uh, the current draw was too high on the pump and it was popping the fuse. So we want to make sure that it's not going to freeze. If we need to switch to the magic kind that's the winter blend, switch to it. Um, there are some issues with uh, washer bottle sensors, the level sensors. But I would much rather make, sh make sure that my washer fluid is not freezing than have to, you know, and, and have a little light on than, uh, than not be able to spray my washers and clean my windshield. Especially you guys up north. Uh, even down here they put salt brine uh, on the roads, but um, the northern stuff is definitely more, more cakes on the windshield. So um, make sure it's not going to freeze. Make sure the spray pattern is right across the windshield. Make sure you're not, you know, just a little trickle out of the, uh, out of the jets and um, make sure the level's right. Make sure you keep some extra in your car. Uh, you're not always gonna be able to stop and pull over right when you run out, so keeping that topped up is really important. And along with the washer fluid, we wanna make sure the wipers are good as well. Um, I know wiper blades are expensive. For my Passat, it's like 60 bucks for all three wiper blades because I drive a wagon. Um, you know, 60 bucks is a small price to pay to uh, to be able to see out of your windshield. So uh, don't cheap out, buy them on Amazon if you wanna save a couple bucks. Um, if you wanna buy the really cheap ones, I don't care. Just make sure you can see out of your windshield while you're driving. Washer fluid, wiper blades, ultra, ultra, ultra important. Get your battery tested. A lot of folks feel like they're gonna to go to AutoZone, get the free battery test, and uh, no matter what, AutoZone's gonna tell them that they need a new battery. Well, they may, I, I don't know. I don't know what tester they use, but uh, you know, we can look at the battery test sheet, we can read the cold cranking amps or uh, however your battery is rated, and we can p compare it to what's on the battery. And if you're supposed to have 700 cold cranking amps in your battery and you have 500, well, now we know there probably is a problem no matter what the person at AutoZone or uh, any of those places. I'm not trying to pick on AutoZone, but uh, any of those places tell you. So you can look at the sheet and kind of make the determination. Again, if you're not sure, run to Google and, and mash it in or just look at your battery and you know most driving adults can do basic math if it's supposed to be 700 and it's 300 well we know we have an issue. Fuel. Keeping a good amount of fuel in your car this is a should be a standard thing anyway um, over half a tank is kind of a, a baseline uh, if you're running down to a quarter of a tank it's not a terribly big deal but you know, I definitely, in cold temperatures, don't like to go below a quarter of a tank. Um, again, a good practice for all year round, no matter what. You'll never know when you're going to get stuck in traffic or, uh, or anything weird like that. So having plenty of fuel in your car is very, very, very important. Now, before it gets cold, and <laughs> like I said, it's 45, so we might be a little late on this, uh, on this trolley here. Make sure your heat works. Um, the Passats have been pretty good about clogging up the heater cores and uh, you know I know you're not going to test the heat when it's 95 degrees outside but what about when it's 70 in the morning roll the uh, roll the dial to, to red or you know mash high in the in the uh, automatic climate control 
and make sure your heat works. And uh, that way you have time to get it into the shop and get it, you know, flushed or a thermostat replaced or basically get the repair done before it's, you know, five degrees outside and you're freezing on your, your 20 minute drive to work. So test the heat, make sure you're good there. Um, the last one I got written down, and it's definitely not the least, um, again, something all year round, make sure your spare tire is good, make sure your jack is there, make sure all your parts to change a tire are there. Um, this is really, really important all year round, but uh, fiddling around with a jack or being stuck on the side of the road in the wintertime is, uh, can, be, can be dangerous, you know, not just from uh, getting hit while you're stopped on the side of the road, but cold temperatures can be, uh, can be bad news if you're stuck out there for you know, six or seven hours waiting on AAA to come change a tire for you or tow you somewhere. So make sure all that stuff's in order. Uh, as far as the outside of your car goes, uh, it's a good time to get your vehicle waxed, especially in the high salt content areas. Um, keeping your car clean in the wintertime is important too, just as much probably in the summertime. Now having said all those, I'm terrible about keeping the outside of my car clean. So, uh, you know, I'm a, a bit of a hypocrite as far as that goes, but I do know it's important. So, uh, you know, don't, don't forget to uh, get, get a good coat of wax on your car and, and make sure you're keeping the salt off as best you can. All right, so hopefully by now our car's all prepped and ready for winter. Um, again, there, you know, there's a couple of variants. If you drive a pickup truck that's two-wheel drive, throw some sandbags in the trunk or in the bed. Uh, if you drive a pickup truck, you probably already know that. So, um, again, situationally dependent, uh, regionally dependent, if you're not sure, Fire me an email and ask charles at humblemechanic.com and I'll be more than happy to try and uh, help you work out some of the kinks you might have in your plan. So our car's ready to go. Let's move on to the stuff that we, uh, we need to keep in our car as, as winter approaches. And a lot of this stuff I keep in my car all year round. I just sort of shift it around based on the seasonality. Um, for winter, keeping warm is probably the most impar important part. And not only keeping you warm, but anybody that commonly rides in your car with you. So for me, I would have stuff for myself and for my wife. If you got kids, make sure you have these things for them. If you ride with your pets all the time, make sure you have these things for them. And uh, basically what I do is I have a milk crate and I kind of stuff it full with, uh, you know, my winter gear. And that's blankets and hats and gloves and hand warmers. Those little uh, little hand warmers you buy at Walmart in the uh, in the orange pack um, are incredibly good to keep in your car all year round. Um, you know, throw them in there and forget about them. Uh, I think it's like iron oxide or something is is the compound, but they work really well and it's a great thing. You just throw them in there and forget about them. Um, extra socks is also something I kind of nerdily keep in my car all the time. I probably have four or five pair of socks extra in my car just uh, hanging out, but I will swap some of those out for uh, heavy duty winter socks. Basically with that stuff, think about what would happen if you were stuck on the side of the road for three hours and your car doesn't run, so you can't run the heat. Um, what would you do to keep warm? Blankets, jackets, you know, if you got kids, make sure you got stuff for them. So um, again, think, stay warm if your car dies. Moving on, um, snow brush, ice scraper, keep one in the car, I keep one in the garage. If you can keep one in your office or at work, that's really cool. Cause I know you guys uh, have that, that live in the snow areas have experienced you know, this much snow on the top of your car and you open your driver's door and what happens, it all falls into the driver's seat. To, uh, so you, uh, you know, reach in to grab your ice scraper and wind up soaking your seat in snow. Or just keep it in the back seat, and then at least it's the back seat that's uh, that's covered in snow, and, and not your butt that's wet and cold on the ride home. Um, throw it in the car. I keep mine in the garage during the summertime. Both of them, I'll throw them in the cars uh, probably this week, and uh, just have them again. Forget about them. I also like to keep some water in the car all year round. Um, I don't keep any more or less in the winter or summertime, but five or six bottles of you know dollar water from uh, from the store. It, it doesn't go bad. It may develop a little weird plasticky taste to it, but I would rather drink water with plasticky taste to it than not have anything at all. So um, snacks, you know, trail mix or whatever. It's easier to keep stuff like that in the wintertime. Uh, you don't have to worry about your candy bar melting like it would in the summertime. So keeping candy in the car is important too. <laughs> Again, 
keep candy in the car for everybody because I know if I uh, broke out a Snickers bar and didn't, didn't have enough to share, I'd be in a big, big, big trouble. This is also a really good time to make sure that the flashlight in your car works. Make sure you have extra batteries for your flashlight, whether it's a rechargeable or uh, you know, it takes AA, AAA, whatever, D batteries like the, the big old mag lights took. Um, now that it's getting darker earlier, it's darker for more hours, um, the, the likelihood of you needing a flashlight now versus in the summertime is quite a bit higher. I know for me it's dark when I leave and it's also dark when I leave work. Um, it's, the sun's coming up just as I get to work and the sun's been down for an hour or so by the time I leave. So it's dark on the way in, dark on the way home. If something happens, I'm, uh, I'm definitely dealing with it while it's dark. So flashlight, very important. Road flares, another thing, you know, if, if you got some, make sure they're in there, uh, both cars, all your cars. I don't drive the cabbie in the wintertime really. And if I do, it's not very far. So the stuff I keep in there is quite a bit less. Plus if it's snowing, there's no way in hell I'm driving it. It has no top. Um, another good opportunity to check your first aid kit while you're kind of moving some of this stuff in and out of your car. Make sure everything's up to date. Make sure you got plenty of band-aids, you know, whatever you keep in your first aid kit in your car, make sure they're all there and available. And you know, your Tylenol is not five years expired. Even though it's probably still safe, you know, that's, that's your call. I won't tell you whether it's good or not. I'm definitely not a medical professional, but, um, you know, studies have shown that a lot of that stuff may lose some, uh, some of its intensity, so to say, but uh, it's definitely not harmful. Keep cash in your car, you know, enough, and if you forget your wallet at home, which I'm notorious for, that you can throw 20 bucks worth of fuel in your car to get home and, and get your stuff. Um, the amount of times that I've left my wallet at home or at work is embarrassing. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, I just, I leave at least 20 bucks. Uh, I'm not going to say where, just in case you guys want to try and scheme me on my, my 20 bucks, but, um, just in case I don't have my wallet on me or whatever, I can, I can at least get fuel and, and, uh, and get on home. So, um, the other thing is if you're the type of person that keeps a, a seven, 72 hour kit in the car, you know, make sure you have tuned that up. Um, it's a good time again to, uh, to tune that up in the winter time, um, change things out for the, the season. Uh, I don't really change too much out. I just go through and make sure everything's good in there and readdress anything, you know, uh, if I had to use zip ties or I know I had to use JB Weld out of it um, over the summertime. So I'll go back through that and make sure I'm, I don't have any uh, loose ends to tie up. Uh, the other thing, boots, uh, an extra pair of boots, snow boots or whatever is really good to keep in your car. Uh, the good opportunity to go through your toolkit and make sure you didn't lose anything or you know, use the super glue that you have in there or whatever. Um, all those little tiny things that you sort of, you put in your car in the summertime or the springtime, you've forgotten about. Uh, wintertime's a really good opportunity to go back through that stuff and, and make sure everything's cool. So that's pretty much where I'm at. Uh, I'd love to know what you guys do to prep your car for winter, especially you northern folks. I know you guys have uh, a way bigger task at hand than, uh, than someone like me in the south or you know, the folks in Arizona, there, there was a fellow on Facebook or someone on Facebook that uh, said they throw a sweater in their car for winter because they live in Arizona. And I, uh, I jokingly said maybe a light jacket if things get crazy. So uh, again, all this is, really depends on where you live and, uh, and, and what kind of vehicle you drive, how much room you have, how far you travel, who travels with you. Um, so, you know, keep, keep all that in mind when you're, when you're getting your car ready for winter. But definitely get the maintenance end of your car taken care of. Definitely throw some extra warm clothes in there. Um, you don't have to buy anything. You probably have extra laying around the house. And uh, just toss it in the car and, and uh, you know, forget about it till spring. So with that, I'm going to wrap up. If you guys have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments, both on the blog and on YouTube. Uh, if you have anything to add, throw it on in there, too. If I miss something, hey, let me know. I, uh, I'd love to know. Again, I, uh, I'm not a, a northerner anymore, so... So I forget the cold weather stuff sometimes. But uh, if you have any ideas for show topics, also feel free to post them in the comments. Uh, you can also email me, charles at humblemechanic.com. I'm always looking forward to getting you guys' emails and feedback. It's really cool. You can follow me on all the major social networks, Facebook, Twitter.
Twitter, Instagram. Um, there's probably a million more that I don't know about, but uh, I stick with those pretty much. And with that, this has been episode 14 of the Humble Mechanic Podcast. Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys next time. <laughs>